Hello everyone. Now we are so happy to meet once again. Uh, we are going to share the word of God. Uh, I will pray and we begin. Father God, we thank you. Once again, you have given us the chance to listen to your word. Your heart is so precious and it is the life. That's why once we receive your word, we receive God and we receive life. And uh, the Bible says that your word is the spirit. And the spirit gives life. I pray that you may guide us to receive your word as this and uh, this time. And bless all viewers to get connected to your word as this. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are reading the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. Yes, please open the book of Acts chapter 10 from verse 1. If you are there, you can read uh, the words of the Lord. A certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. A devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw Peter in a vision, an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up, up for a memorial before them. Aramutumbira, Aramutinya, Aramuazati, Nichimami. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon whose name is Peter. And he's lodging with Simon at Tana, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. Yes, verse 8, so when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And then he became very hungry and wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Verse 11, and so heaven opened, and an object like a great sheet bound and the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. 
Awani jori chingu tse masi chini chila manuka jisa nungenda umukoma hasi Jifashko ya kubinyeta wine chiji hasi Ine to when all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth Will be scraping things and birds of the air Halimu wanyama asuka za mwako yose zigenza maguru ane Nibi kuru kahasi yose nibi kuru kamu and the voice came to him, rise Peter, kill and eat. But uh, Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Verse 15, and the voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. That's what the two let's jump. And he commanded, and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Yes, you have read the long story. Uh, I wish we could read the whole chapter. Uh, because of time, we cannot uh, finish the whole story. Uh, I want to just talk shortly about this man called Cornelius. Uh, the story is about him and uh, Peter, the servant of them. Uh, because consider they are the main characters of this story. But as you know, the word of God is always come, uh, with the heart of God. This Bible ha contains the heart of God. That's why whenever we read the Bible, we cannot just read the stories as stories. But such stories talk about my heart and your heart. They talk about our life. Yeah, tonight I will tell you the difference between religious life and spiritual life. So before people receive the true remission of sins, uh, they live also going to church. Of course there are people who don't go to church but many people especially in Rwanda they go to church. Some go to church on Sundays others on the Sabbath uh, I mean Saturdays others join the mosque on Friday uh, we can see that that people have uh, like, a, like a day, a specific day on which they go to church. <coughs> so what do they do there? Usually they open the Bible and listen to the word. Uh, they open Quran, uh, Quran. And also they listen to the words from the Quran. Uh, of course, all of them they think they believe in God very well. And they think they are on the way to go to heaven. 
But the more people live in the religion, the more they get exhausted. Because in the religion, usually we learn how to live with a good uh, like life or good manners, uh, which is actually good. But uh, the serious problem the religion is they teach us these things telling us that once we uh, we do it, we do them well, we can go to heaven, but once we fail, we can go to hellfire. Actually the teachings in the religion and the teachings of the society are almost similar. Uh, the difference is the reason we are like taught such uh, uh, such values. You know, <coughs> we have to live well in the society. Because once you live the harmony with people, this brings the benefit to you. Uh, but the problem is that in the church we are terrified. Uh, that if we fail to keep the law, we shall perish. So because of this, people try with all of their hearts to keep the law. But not many people succeed. Even those who succeed, in their, they succeed in their thoughts. What do I mean? Yeah, when you read the Bible, you can see how God uh, gave us the law with a, a certain heart. God didn't mean uh, to, uh, to keep the law. Because uh, when you read James chapter 2, James chapter 2 verse 10 uh, you can realize that the intention of God was not for us to keep the law. Let's read this verse, James chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, Whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilt of all. Everyone, if God wanted us to keep the law and to go to heaven, why did he give us the law which is very complicated like this? Who can stumble willing to? Everyone, when you stumble, you stumble and willingly and intentionally. But to God, even if you stumble to the law, you are great of all. Think about this. You keep the first law. You keep the second law. Let's assume that we have maybe ten, ten laws. Because many people they know only ten commandments. Though in the Bible there are six thirteen laws. But even if they are ten, let's say they are only ten. And you keep maybe nine. But when you reach the tenth, you stumble. The Bible says you are guilty of all the law. In other words, those people who repent of the sin they commit, they ought, they ought to repent from A to Z. 
Let's say you had lust. Uh, so if you had lust, it means you are a murderer, you are a drug trial, you are everything which which is against the law. The Bible says do not covet. So if you covet something, you are already guilty of the of all the whole law. So this is the law of God. God didn't mean that we should keep the law to go to heaven. But in the religion, we are taught to keep the law in order to go to heaven. It's okay, you can keep the law. You can try. There's no problem about that. Because you need even to live well in the society. But if you have the intention to keep the law in order to go to heaven, you are very wrong. Because that is not the way to go to heaven. You are living nothing but religious life. So, you need the gospel. You need to know the true spiritual life. You need to receive the remission of sin. Today we read Acts chapter 10. Let's think about this man called Cornelius. Who was he? When you read the verse 2, the soul describes him. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. This is a kind of person Cornelius was. Who can pray always among you? I don't know if you can pray always. I don't know if you fear God really. But for him, he feared God with all his household. And he could pray every day, every time. This was Cornelius. But this life is nothing but religious life. Because when you keep reading, verse, uh, verse 5, God came to him and told him, Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And no net He is lodging with Simon Atana, whose house by the sea he will tell you what you must do. Can you see him? Uh, yeah, when God saw him, he had compassion on him. Yes, he, God decided to call Peter. Peter is the servant of God who knew how Cornelius could become righteous. Peter knew how Cornelius could receive the remission of sin. But Cornelius had been living just religious life. That's why God thought about him. And he let him meet Peter. And Apostle Peter met Cornelius. But before he went there, he hesitated. Because God has shown him, had shown him some vision. Telling that he is meeting a foreigner. 
ira ibyo guhura actually uh, long time ago uh, Jews were not supposed to meet uh, other people that's why we find the way Bible talks about the Greeks and Jews. Jew, uh, Greeks were considered as pagans. But Jews were the people of them. So it was the first time Peter was to meet uh, a Greek. A person who's not uh, a Jew. So he tried to refuse. But do you know what God told him? When you read to verse 15. The Bible says, and the boy spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Yes, God told him this man is also cleansed. He seems also were redeemed. Like yours were redeemed, also his sins were redeemed. You just go and preach to him. Uh, witness to him the gospel. The gospel of Christ. That's why Peter went there and he started preaching. So in short, we read his, uh, some verses in his preaching starting from verse 42. Uh, Amen. We read only short, uh, uh, short message about the messages he preached that time. So this is the words he spoke to them. Verse forty-two. And he commanded us to preach to the people. And to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Everyone does the judge. So many people they judge themselves. Ah, we are sinners. We are uh, not righteous. Uh, we need to cleanse ourselves. We need to sanctify ourselves. If we don't do this, God will put us in hell. But remember that you are not a judge. God is the fair judge. And he chose, he chose Jesus to be the judge. Uh, judge of the living and the dead. Everyone you should listen to Jesus. But forty-three, the Bible says to him, for the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Yes. This is the gospel. Once people believe in his name, once they realize that he is the only judge God ordained, they can receive the remission of sin. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who had the word. Everyone, this was so amazing. Cornelius and his household, they listened to the gospel. And it was so amazing to the other that there is remission of their sins. They received the forgiveness of sins. And they received the Holy Spirit. And they were rejoicing. This is the work of the servants of God. 
They need to witness what Jesus has done for people. Because outside so many people are just religious. They are living like Cornelius, thinking that they are serving God. As I told you, it's okay to live like that. But don't try to live good life in order to convince God that you should go to heaven through your works. Or of us we failed to keep the hope. Or of us we saw that before God. But God Christ us. God forgive all of us. Let's read uh, last verses in First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through verse eleven. Please open the book of First Corinthians chapter six. ndumbo <laughs> No drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Muziko bakirana ngo batazara kugamba bw'Imana, nimwishuke abahese cyangwa bari abasengishushanyo cyangwa basambanye cyangwa ibitingwa cyangwa bagabo bendana. Ndivasen Yes, you see here the Bible says do not be deceived. Are you righteous or unrighteous person? Are you sinner or righteous? Yeah, that is asking you this question. Because God wants you to make sure that you are no longer a sinner. Because if you are a sinner and you are deceived that through your work you can go to heaven, this is a deceit of Satan. Yes, Cornelius was a devout man. He was a devout man. He was a devout man. Cornelius feared God. Cornelius uh, could pray always. But he was still a sinner. He had not yet received the forgiveness of sins. He would be deceived that it was okay. But God decided to send his servant Peter to him. So that he can serve him. Everyone, God is telling you tonight. Mm. You thought that you are okay. You thought that just living religious life is living spiritual life. But you should not be deceived. Because all sinners will go to hell. Don't think you didn't come to Adrata, you didn't murder, you didn't do this and that. Because all of us we are found in this verse 9 and 10. At least we have stumbled on one point. That means you are. Thief, you are murderer, you are a drata, you are everything because you are great of the whole world. So admit this. And find the grace in the eyes of God. No one 
found the grace before the Lord. When the earth was about to be destroyed by fire. And he received the grace. You can also receive grace. It is written in verse 11. And it's in verse 11. Because verse 11 says, And such were well, some of you. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Everyone, we are all in this verse 11. Not because we did well, but because God decided to judge us using Jesus. Because Jesus came down to the world and he cleansed us. So do not call what is cleansed by God and cream. If, if God said that you are perfect, who are you to say that you are not? If God said that you are washed, who are you to say that you are not washed? Many people are deceived by Satan. They just try to sanctify themselves. But all you can do is to believe that you are such uh, that sinner, but you are worse, you are sanctified, and you are just trying in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I hope that you think about this heart of God. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you because of your love. Yes, you have been living the religious life thinking that you are going to heaven. But we came to realize that it was the deceit of Satan. Because living with various is good, but it is not the way to go to heaven. We need to live uh, <coughs> from the various because we are in a society. But that is not a proof of salvation. The proof of salvation is your crucifixion. Once we believe that you took all, all of our sins away, that's when we can receive the remission of sins. And we can repeat after you that we are praised, we are washed, we are sanctified. Therefore, we can witness how holy we are and how righteous we became. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you may bless the hearts of all viewers. To only believe in your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.